In this video, we're covering tennis footwork and all the information that you need to prepare better on the court and is coming up right now. A common aspect amongst all pro tennis players is that they have great footwork. A common red flag when it comes to tennis footwork is going to set up for the ball and hitting, but having the ball too close to your body or too far away, which oftentimes results in a miss hit. Another common red flag on tennis footwork is when the player is moving and setting up for the ball, but they're playing the ball too high or too low when they could have moved their feet a little bit better and taken it at their ideal contact point. These red flags that I mentioned just are going to increase the likelihood of making unforced errors. And the whole idea about tennis footwork is to prepare the best way that you can on court to hit the ball as intended. In tennis, there are set ways to move on the court. Just like in other sports such as basketball or dance, there are technical movements that just allow you to perform better at the activity that you're doing. First things first, let's cover the ready position. When you're in the ready position, you want to be on the balls of your feet. A good rule of thumb is that you're able to stick your racket in between your feet, which is going to be roughly shoulder width apart or a little bit further. And this really puts you in more of an athletic stance. When you're here, your booty's down a little bit, just enough to where you feel like you can push off the ground in an athletic manner to explode out and get the ball. Or after you hit, when you're down in your stance, that you can recover back to the center. It's very common for players not to want to be in the proper ready position because it takes more work. One thing to realize is that when you're in the ready position, you're lowering your center of gravity where you can be a little bit more athletic to push off and go get each shot. It's going to be more work, but it's going to bring up your performance. And over time, with you being in this stance, your body will get used to it. Your glutes, your legs, your feet, everything will just get a little bit stronger. It's just going to take time doing it. Quick pro tip on the ready position. Oftentimes, if you tell a player to bend their knees, they really don't want to. They hear it all the time. It's not something that's very fun. You can talk about widening the base. That helps. Some of my uh, clients, I'll tell them that they're a Ferrari. You know, ride low like a Ferrari, and then they end up getting a little bit lower, a little bit more athletic on the court. The split step in tennis is a small little hop that allows you to get on the balls of your feet where you can react to the oncoming ball effectively and explosively. The split step can be seen in other sports. When we look at soccer on the goal line, oftentimes the goalie is looking for the ball and they'll do a split right before the player kicks so then they can go out and try to get that oncoming ball, try to protect it from going into the goal. Now that we know that the split step is just a short little hop that gets you on the balls of your feet, it's important to know when to initiate your split step. You want to initiate your split step before your opponent makes contact with the ball. So recognize their swing pattern and right before they're going to make contact with the ball, initiate your split. By the time they make contact, you'll be in the air and then hopefully by the time you land, you'll know where the ball's going and you can explode out to get that oncoming ball. In my experience, if I just try to split as my opponent's making contact with the ball over and over and over and over again, habitually, I'm going to start to feel it, I'm going to get used to it, and I'm going to get, start to get the timing and rhythm of my split step. For the first step reaction, think of your outside leg as being the loaded leg for a sprinter who's going to go off and sprint. So you hit your split, you push off with your inside to load your outside. That's going to make this foot pivot. So you split, you push off, you pivot this foot, and now you're off to the races to go run down that oncoming ball. It's very important that you push off hard for those first two steps to maximize your movement to the ball. Because in tennis, it's not about covering a ton of ground. It's about being quick to react to go get that ball. Let's say that you're going to be receiving a backhand groan stroke. You hit your split, you push off with your inside leg, which then is going to make this foot pivot. So you see how my body is all oriented towards my backhand. And then you're going to move out, race down that ball and hit. 
Tennis is much like dance, where footwork builds upon itself. So as you learn every step, it's gonna work in conjunction with the other steps to make sure that you're moving and performing your best on court. So you've hit your split, you did your first step reaction, now it's time to do adjustment steps, which are small calculated steps to ensure that you set up as best as you can for the oncoming ball and position yourself properly. Let's do some examples of adjustment steps. So you're back here, you're gonna hit a forehand, you hit your split, you pivot, you're gonna do your first step reaction, and then you're gonna take these small calculated steps to set up and hit the ball. So you're here, split, pivot, push off, small steps, step in and hit. Here's a quick pro tip. One way that you know that you need to work on your adjustment steps is if you go to set up for the ball, and you end up hitting the ball where the ball's too close, or your shoulders raise up, or your body weight is pulling in a direction other than forward where you intend to hit the ball, those are all signs that you could be utilizing small calculated steps to ensure that you're gonna make contact with that ball right on the money, right where you want it. When you go to hit your forehand ground stroke, or your backhand ground stroke, your back foot is gonna follow through just the same way as your racket follows through. It's gonna happen naturally. So when you go to hit your backhand, you step in, you finish your racket, your shoulders and hips unload, which is gonna naturally bring some momentum for your feet to line up parallel with one another. And this is important because it's gonna set up recovery steps or crossover steps that you can utilize to get back into the center of the court and prepare for the next oncoming ball. We have different footwork in tennis for moving out to the ball and recovering back to the center. And we're gonna cover those right now. When you go to hit your forehand, you hit your split, do your first step reaction, which we covered, and then you run out to the ball. However, when you're recovering, you don't wanna run back to the center of the court because you don't know where your opponent is gonna be hitting the ball. And it's so important to hit your split step each time. That way your shoulders and hips are squared up to your opponent so then you can make the right decision on where to move. So let's talk about the side steps. After you split, you move out, you hit the ball, you're gonna side step back to recover into the court. And these side steps, you're down in an athletic position and you're pushing off your feet where your feet never touch, but you're down in an athletic stance moving. So you push on your outside leg to come back to the center. And by doing this, it's gonna make you very agile and ready to explode out to get the oncoming ball, no matter which way it's going. If you go and you sidestep back like this, I can push off to hit a forehand, or if I sidestep here, I can push off and go hit a backhand. Either one's gonna work. Let's say that you need to recover because you got ran off the court hitting a forehand. This is where you're gonna utilize a crossover step. When you do a crossover step, it's exactly what it sounds. You're here and you're gonna take your leg and you're gonna cross over the other leg. So it's just making one big step as a cross. This is gonna make up a lot of ground, but it shouldn't be utilized if you're close to the center of the court only when you're really getting pushed off. So let's see it in action. You're here, you get a forehand, so you move all the way out. You go, you hit, your feet are parallel, you push with the inside leg, you cross over, then you sidestep. Here, step in, hit, inside leg, push, sidestep. So slow motion, you're here, step in, hit, take this foot, cross over, sidestep. Now let's say that you get pulled off the court in a major way where you're thinking, okay, I'm gonna get this back, but I know that he's going to the other side of the court, and if I don't run right now, I'm gonna lose the point. In this case, you may wanna do a run step, and it's similar to the first step reaction. So let's say that you're getting a forehand that pulls you way off the court. So you get way off the court, you go to hit, and you know that they're going that, the other way. You may decide to push off run and then transition back to side steps just to make up some ground. I like the crossover step much more as well as the side steps. However, 
sometimes you got to do what you got to do to survive the onslaught that your opponent's giving you and stay in the point. I think that it's important to address that perfect footwork rarely happens. So for example, if you are under duress or you're returning serve, you may just have to do your split and then make one quick step over where you're not in the best position to hit the ball, but that's what you gotta do. Of course, ideally we wanna split, get our feet, adjustment steps, step in and hit, but at times we're not gonna have the luxury of being able to utilize that time to make the proper setup. So you have a little bit of wiggle room. Another thing to consider is your development as a tennis player. There may be things that your coach has you do that may not fit this mold because they're trying to get you to stay on balance or develop some other piece of your game. And until you get that down, you can't move on to the next step. So like for example, instead of doing the back foot follow through, like if you're here and you step in and you were gonna do the back foot follow through, let's say that the student is standing a little bit straight up and when they go to hit, they're kind of spinning and they're out of balance. Then the instructor may decide that, hey, for a while we're gonna step in and I want you to hold yourself on balance on tiptoe back here. And then once you have that and you're unloading with your shoulders and hips into the ball, then we can get that back foot to naturally go forward. So just remember you have some wiggle room. It all depends on your development. So trust your coach, whatever they're saying is probably specific to your needs. Let's go over some tennis footwork best practices. When you're moving your feet on the court, one of the best practices is to make sure that you're always down in your ready position. You don't wanna be standing straight up. You don't wanna be waiting for the ball like you're standing in line at a grocery store. You wanna be down, set, light on your feet and bouncing. Sometimes I refer to this as having happy feet or you're popping the popcorn, so you're always bouncing on your feet. When the point's over, then you can relax, but you definitely wanna be down in an athletic stance, popping the popcorn, ready to explode, ready to move for whenever that ball comes. Best practice number two, make sure to utilize all the court. That means that when you're receiving a ball, be okay with moving inside the court to take that ball waist high. Recover back, let the ball drop to your waist. Move up, do whatever you have to do with your feet to make sure that you're gonna take it at the optimal point. Oftentimes this would be waist high, especially if you're first learning or you're developing your game, waist high is a solid option. And then as you grow and you, you go further with your game, maybe you're gonna be going more chest high depending on your grip, that sort of thing. But rule of thumb, waist high, great option. Tennis footwork best practice number three, take adjustment steps. You aren't limited to the number of steps that you can take. So make sure that you take those small calculated steps to make sure that you hit the ball in the right spot where you intend to, so then you get the result that you want. When working on your tennis footwork, I recommend shadowing. So grab your racket, find a court, or turn on the TV, do it in your living room, do what you have to do, but go through the steps. Step in, hit, make sure that you go slow. Do what you need to do to make sure that you have quality practice and you execute each step. So you may just start off with hitting your split, pivoting, doing your run steps, step in, hit, and then just shuffle back. Then when you get better, you may decide to split, run out, step in, crossover step, back to the center. You can build upon it, but just go slow at your own pace, do the proper form, and through repetition and practice, you will get it down. And even if you're not hitting the ball, it's gonna translate to the court, just put in the time. That's it for today's video, guys. If you enjoyed this, go to tennisnation.com and check out the ultimate tennis footwork guide. I have it all written out step-by-step step for you. And give me a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'm gonna be bringing content to you guys next week. Until then, I'll see you guys on the court.